leader of the opposition. What this session of Parliament taught us is that after nine years of this Prime Minister, everything is broken. 25% of Canadians are now living in poverty. Two million lined up at food banks. 38% more people are homeless. The housing costs have doubled. It wasn't like this before this Prime Minister, and it won't be like this after he's gone. Will he put us through another year and a half of this costly hell, or will he cause, call a carbon tax election today so we can elect a common-sense government to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Leader of the Opposition actually cared more about Canadians than he does about his own political interests, he'd be supporting uh, the 400,000 kids working to help with the National School Food Program. He'd be voting in favour, instead of opposing at every turn, uh, the dental care program that has already helped over 200,000 seniors and will now, uh, as of next week, start helping uh, young people and Canadians with disabilities. He'd be standing with us on expanding childcare spaces instead of campaigning against it. But Mr. Speaker, he doesn't care about Canadians. He cares only about himself. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, these are the same promises that he's been making for nine years. And instead of a, the theoretical utopia that he's promised, what Canadians are living through is hell with tent cities popping up across the country in places they never existed before, with two million people lined up in food banks, one in ten Torontonians included in that number, in a town where right now it is impossible for almost anyone to afford a home, and there are 256 tent cities. Why won't he recognize that these are the very real consequence of his policy of wackonomics? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as part of our plan to invest in the, most in, uh, the most ambitious housing plan this country has ever seen, to invest uh, in supports for seniors, supports for young people, uh, supports uh, for Canadians with disabilities, uh, the Conservative leader is choosing to demonstrate what everyone knows Conservative parties do, which is protect the wealthiest and let everyone else fend for themselves. While we are asking the wealthiest Canadians to pay a little bit bit more by raising the capital gains inclusion rate for anyone making over $250,000 in a given year on selling properties. He's standing with the wealthiest, not with the middle class and people working hard to join him. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the middle class doesn't exist after nine years of this Prime Minister. Here are the facts. 76% of young people believe they'll never afford a home. 38% more homeless people. 256 homeless encampments in Toronto alone. Two million people lined up at a food bank. One in four Canadians skipping meals because they can't afford the price of food. Is this what he meant when he said sunny ways for the middle class? Yeah. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we've seen throughout this session and indeed throughout his career, uh, covering more than 19 years as a parliamentarian, that the leader of the Conservative Party is very quick to use sound bites that use Canadians that exacerbate and exaggerate and indeed amplify the real concerns people are facing, but he is nowhere on solutions for them. He's standing against dental care, against pharmacare against investments in the middle class and people working hard to join it, in, against investments to create jobs and a future for Canadians, because all he cares about is himself and his future. In this last week of Parliament, the Prime Minister showed us whose side he's really on. At a time when one out of four Canadians are living in poverty, the out-of-touch Liberals voted against stronger penalties for corporations that are ripping off Canadians, against banning mergers that hurt people. Why is this Prime Minister letting corporations rip off Canadians when one out of four are living in poverty? Here, 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 here. 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as a government, we've been focused from day one on helping young Canadians succeed. That's why on day one we raised taxes on the wealthiest 1% and lowered them for the middle class, which the NDP at the time voted against. We've continued to step up on asking the wealthiest to pay a little more in this most recent budget uh, by raising the capital gains inclusion tax so the people making $250,000 or more uh, on capital gains uh, share a little more of those profits with Canadians who actually need it. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, once again, the Conservatives have aligned themselves with the wealthiest in this country and are not there for people who need it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister is also forced to release data from his own government showing that there would be a $30 billion a year hit to our economy as a result of his job-killing carbon tax, data that he had up until then been hiding. He's been going around claiming the Canadians are better off because they pay this tax. Did the calculations that went into his 8 out of 10 talking points include this $30 billion a year cost to the Canadian economy and to Canadian families? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed that 8 out of 10 Canadians in jurisdictions that have the federal carbon price in them get more money back from the Canada carbon rebate than they pay with this price on pollution. That is fact. Now, the Conservative leader has been using erroneous figures that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has said he made a mistake on to uh, continue uh, to, attack his, uh, to attack our plan on fighting climate change and putting more money back in people's pockets. Eight out of ten Canadians are better off, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. Right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Does that include the $30 billion a year economic cost when distributed among those eight out of ten families? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again... The Conservatives are basing their attacks on climate action and affordability on erroneous calculations that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has admitted that he made. The fact uh, that the Parliamentary Budget Officer uh, also calculated without making any mistakes that 8 out of 10 Canadians are better off with the Canada carbon rebate and the price on pollution means that we are not only fighting climate change and bringing down emissions, we're also putting more money back in the pockets of Canadians who need support right now. Money that the Conservative Party wants to take away. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I'm not using parliamentary budget officer numbers. I'm using numbers that this Liberal government has now published. This government has admitted that their carbon tax we'll hit Canadians with $30 billion in annual losses to wages and higher prices. That is their data. They published it. So once again, very specific question. When he claims that 8 out of 10 are better off, does that include the $30 billion of costs that he now admits that the government will impose on the economy? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I don't know how much clearer I can be, but I'll try. Based on everything this government knows, all the studies we've made, all the studies that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has made, we can affirm very clearly, and it's backed up by independent economists, that 8 out of 10 families in jurisdictions across the country where the federal price on pollution applies do better off with more money in their pockets than the price on pollution costs them with the Canada carbon rebate. It's quite And if the Conservatives are wrong on this. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He can't say yes. Because he knows that when you take the $30 billion a year and divide it by the 17 million Canadian families, then you come up with almost $2,000 per Canadian family 
based on numbers published by his own government. So it's like him saying, you can afford this house as long as you don't take into consideration the down payment and the monthly mortgage payments. <laughs> if you take out $30 billion of costs, you don't have a real calculation. So why doesn't he put the $30 billion back into the calculator and show Canadians whether they're really better off? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It's actually quite stunning to see the leader lay it out so clearly that all of his math depends on one factor that he believes, which is climate change isn't real, according to the leader of the opposition. That's the only way to make sure his math works. If he says there are no costs to Canadians of uh, extreme weather events, there are no costs to Canadians about degrading competitive competition uh, when the world is switching towards greener, greener solutions. If you don't believe in climate change, then his math works. But if you know that climate change is a real threat to Canadians and the economy, then we need to act, and that's what we're doing. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. No, all you have to accept is the fact that his carbon tax will not reduce by one penny the cost of climate change to Canadians. It will not eliminate one flood, one drought, one storm, one anything. This carbon tax literally does nothing to change the weather or the climate. What it does is makes Canadians poor. So will he finally admit that all along he's been misleading Canadians, that he knew he had the data that Canadians pay more and get less and get screwed over by the carbon tax? Hey.